Hello, and welcome to this video on the biology of the yellow-legged Asian hornet, also known as Vespa velutina nigrithorax. My name is Kirsty Stainton, and I'm a scientist at Ferra Science Limited. This talk is made on behalf of the Animal and Plant Health Agency and DEFRA. So we have one species of native hornet in the United Kingdom. This is the European hornet. It's also known as Vespa crabro. Vespa crabro, shown here on the left, and it's a very large hornet, ranging from 18 to 35 millimetres in length. It is an orangey brown colour overall and has distinct yellow stripes on its abdomen, which is not too unlike the patterns you see on some wasps. It has brown legs. The yellow legged Asian hornet Vespu velatina nigrithorax is an invasive species. It is not native to Europe, but it originated from Asia. It is shown here on the right side of the screen. It's a smaller hornet from 17 to 30 millimetres long. It's black in colour except for a single distinct orange yellow band on the fourth segment of its abdomen and it has conspicuous yellow legs. Although we refer to the invasive Vespa velutina nigrithorax as the Asian hornet, there are in fact many hornet species in Asia. The Asian hornet we're referring to originated in the southeast of China, but across Asia there are 13 different subspecies of Vespa velutina alone. As you can see from the map that's shown on the right, the different subspecies of Vespa velutina are generally found in different areas of Asia and have different coloration patterns on their bodies. The subspecies Nigrithorax occupies quite a wide geographical range in the southeast of China and a small area bordering with Cambodia. In 2004, Vespa velutina nigrithorax was first reported in Europe in an area of southwest France. This is indicated on the map shown by a small red dot. This happened after an accidental introduction of a mated queen hornet. The species quickly spread through France and has now reached Portugal, Spain, Italy, Belgium and Germany. It was reported for the first time in the United Kingdom in 2016, when a single nest was discovered in Tetbury in Gloucestershire. A single nest was discovered again in 2017, four more in 2018 and three more in 2019 in different areas of England. All nests found were destroyed and removed by trained and qualified personnel. This hornet has a very fast rate of expansion and when it arrived in France it spread on average 78 kilometres per year. This is because a founder female can fly very long distances in winter before hibernation and in spring when looking to create her primary nest. If the Asian hornet continues its expansion it is likely that this species will colonise a large part of Europe. Using information gathered from the native range of the hornets and from areas where hornets have invaded, Claire Villemont and her colleagues at the French National Centre for Scientific Research predicted that many of the countries in Europe have a suitable habitat for the invasive hornet. In this diagram from their paper, we can see on the map that the lighter areas are less suitable for hornets, while the darkest areas are the most suitable. Unfortunately, this indicates that most of Europe is at high risk of establishment by this pest. We can understand why hornets are so successful at colonising new areas if we look at their life cycle. A colony of Vespa velutina is comprised mainly of non-reproductive female workers. Unlike honeybees, the only reproductive female in the colony is the queen. Vespa velutina queens spend their winter in hibernation in a sheltered area, but they will emerge in early spring looking to begin building a nest, which is called a primary nest or an embryo nest. The queen will have mated in the previous autumn. This foundress will lay her eggs in the small nest to rear up a small number of workers. If the primary nest is suitably located, she may continue to build her colony at this original site, or she may abandon it and found a new one called a secondary nest in a more suitable location. Over summer, 
the nest will continue to grow in size and a single foundress may give rise to thousands of hornets. In a study by Quintin Rome and his colleagues from the National Museum of Natural History in Paris, it was found that nests collected from the southwest of France between 2007 and 2010 gave rise to an average of around 6,000 individual hornets per nest. One particularly successful nest was recorded as producing 13,300 individuals in one year. The hornet population peaks in early autumn, and during this time there will be noticeable predation of invertebrates by the hornets. In the autumn, the nest will reach its reproductive stage. Up until this point, no reproduction will occur, but in early September, males will begin emerging that are capable of reproduction. Approximately 15 days later, females will emerge. But these females are not destined to be workers. They are the future queens. And once mated, they will disperse, hibernate and start the process new next year and build new nests. The remaining hornets will die and the nest will not be used again. It will likely degrade over winter. We should note that these timings might be different for nests in the UK as the data gathered concerns nests found throughout France. A single nest may produce up to 13,000 workers in a season with approximately 1,800 individuals present in the nest at a given time. Nests found in France can be as large as 80 centimetres, but so far the nests found in the UK have been much smaller at around 20 centimetres. This diagram shows us a breakdown of the reproductive phase of the nest from data gathered by Claire Villemont and her colleagues on the emergence of sexual individuals from Asian hornet nests. As you can see from the bars on this chart, the individuals emerging from the nest at the end of August and the first two weeks of September are female workers. And this has been the case during the season and up until this point. This changes in mid-September when the first males begin to emerge. These males will be capable of sexual reproduction and will continue to emerge through October and November. At the beginning of October, the first females who are capable of sexual reproduction will emerge. They're called gynes or foundresses. Worker females are also still emerging, but they're not capable of sexual reproduction. As you can see, through the last two weeks of October and the first two weeks of November, the majority of gynes emerge. After this, mating will occur. In one study by Quintin Rome and his colleagues, a maximum of 563 future queens were found in a nest in late autumn. However, mortality of founder queens is high and ranges from 90 to 99%, so we do not expect that a single nest should give rise to this many new nests. Hornets make their nests with plant material mixed with water and saliva. But no specific species of plant has been identified that Vespa velatina prefer to build their nests from. Neither do they have a single preference for what species of tree they build their nests in. In fact, they don't always build their nests in trees, and Asian hornet nests, particularly primary nests, have been found in sheds and roofs. More unusual locations for nest discoveries include a pylon, a birdhouse, a road sign and a ventilation grill. The pie chart shown here at the top of the slide from a study by Daniel Franklin and his colleagues at the University of Warwick shows that in a survey in France, 76.9% of primary nests found were discovered in man-made structures. This is probably because they are sheltered and easily accessible and would be safer from weather damage as primary nests are very delicate. Secondary nests, however, were predominantly found in trees, with 73.5% discovered in trees. 64% of nests found in trees were on oak trees, 149 were found in pine trees, 4% on London pane trees, and 2.4% on poplar trees, while other trees with only one or two nests found on them include robinia, birch, tulip trees, acacia, lime trees, liquid amber, and fir. In the pie chart shown at the bottom of the slide, reproduced from a paper by Golda Renza and his colleagues in Barcelona, a survey performed in Spain in 2012 also observed that hornets build nests in a variety of different tree species. Here, the majority of nests, 32%, were found in Robinia, 
But many nests were also found in Platanus hispanica, which is the London pane tree, and the common oak tree. Nests were found to a lesser extent on ash trees, alder, willow, lime, poplar and birch. Vespa velatina is a threat to native invertebrates because its diet is composed mainly of protein, which the foragers harvest from their prey and take back to the nest to feed the developing brood. The hornets will capture an assortment of different insects and spiders, but studies in France indicate that honeybees constitute a large proportion of hornet captures and approximately 40% of their diet consisted of honeybees. Honeybees present a tempting prey for hornets, as there are so many in a single place. But unfortunately, European honeybees, Apis mellifera, do not have the same defensive behaviours as the Asian honeybees, Apis serrana, which is why European beekeepers may experience excessive colony losses because of the hornets. When predating on Apis serrana, the Asian honeybee, as they would in their native habitat, Vespa velutina will be met with a more effective defensive response than they encounter from Apis mellifera, our European honeybee. In one study, authors found that the bee balling by Asian hornets, a defensive tactic where bees engulf attacking wasps or hornets, is more effective at killing the intruder because there are more guard bees in the bee ball and the ball reaches higher temperatures with Asian honeybees compared to European honeybees. In this video, we can see what happens to a honeybee after a Vespa velutina worker has captured it. The hornet flies to a nearby site to dissect the bee to make it lighter to carry to the nest and because the hornet doesn't need all of the bee, it's only interested in the thorax which is rich in protein. The hornet removes the abdomen first, followed by the wings and then the head and finally she begins removing the cuticle surrounding the thorax. She can then easily transport this protein-rich meal back to the developing brood at the nest. Current controls for Vespa velutina nigrithorax involve the use of pesticides, manual trapping and mechanical destruction. Application of such methods is labour intensive and highly unlikely to result in the elimination of an established population. And you have to locate the nest first. Trapping the sexual stages of Vespa velutina in spring is ineffective for population control due to the large number of gynes released by a nest. High levels of natural mortality occur in overwintering gynes and this has little effect on the establishment of new colonies. Also, it's worth remembering that trapping using kill traps in the spring results in the death of a large number of non-target species. In the table shown from a study by Rochas Nosa and Cancella, we see a list of non-target invertebrates captured in Asian hornet traps. Less than 1% of the captures is Vespa velutina. The majority of the captures is Diptera, which is flies. 
The remaining invertebrates captured in these traps include Hymenoptera, which is bees, wasps and ants, Lepidoptera, which is butterflies and moths, Coleoptera, which is beetles, Blattodea, which is cockroaches, Arachnoidea, which is spiders, and Dematra, which is earwigs. So why not try making a monitoring trap instead? They allow you to check your apiary for hornets while reducing the negative impacts on native insects. Find out how to make one by visiting the National Bee Unit website. The link is shown here. You can also visit the APHA YouTube video entitled How to Make an Asian Hornet Monitoring Trap, where you'll find a video and full instructions of how to assemble your own trap. The link is shown here. Researchers have investigated different techniques for controlling Vespa velutina. In a study by Vilmont and colleagues in 2015, it is reported that the thick-headed fly, which is a parasitoid of wasp species, may be an enemy of Vespa velutina nigrithorax. But when they tested it, they determined that it was not an effective control agent. Similarly, the nematode Ferromyrmis, which was discovered in Vespa velutina in France in 2012, was assessed for its use as a biological control agent. But modelling the effects of the nematode on the host predicted that even at an 80% rate of infection of the hornets in the nest, colonies can still produce reproductive individuals and therefore control was ineffective. Entomopathogenic fungi are fungi that specifically kill insects. They can have a broad or a narrow spectrum of efficacy. Some species of entomopathogenic fungi have been tested against Vespa velutina. Bovaria bassiana and Metarhizum robertsii were tested by researchers in 2018, but the effects on mortality of the hornets was mild. Hornets directly immersed in spore suspension had the highest rate of death amongst the hornets at 60%, but application of spores to the surface of hornets only had a mild effect, killing only 35% of hornets, while feeding the spores to the hornets was the least efficient method of inducing death, causing only 14% mortality in hornets. This would not be effective enough to prevent nests from breeding. Sterile insect technique is a method for controlling insects where male insects are sterilised and released into the environment. These sterile males mate with females, and in some insect species, if a female mates with a sterile male, she cannot produce any viable offspring. Unfortunately, this is not feasible for use against Asian hornets. As it is prohibited by the lack of large-scale rearing for the hornets and the cost of implementation. Our current understanding of hornet reproductive biology suggests that it's unlikely to be effective anyway. Our best tactic for controlling Vespa velutina is to monitor for their presence. There are techniques for tracking the hornets, so if foraging hornets are discovered, National Bee Unit bee inspectors can be sent to an outbreak area to triangulate the location of the nest by releasing foraging hornets and tracking them as they return to the nest. This is a regulated activity which only authorised bee health inspectors can carry out, so we must emphasise that members of the public should not try this themselves. In addition to triangulating the location of the nests by visual tracking of the hornets, electronic tacking of individual foragers can lead investigators back to the location of the nests very quickly. Peter Kennedy and his colleagues at the University of Exeter have developed technology that allows them to tag and track hornets back to the nests up to 1.3 kilometres away from their foraging location. The images are shown here from Peter's paper and shows a hornet which has the electronic tag tied to its abdomen. Researchers at Ferra Science Limited are testing the use of UAVs mounted with cameras that can detect temperature changes to find Asian hornet nests as they're usually located in high places. In this video, taken from a UAV in flight, the darker areas are hotter, and you can see a hornet's nest in the centre of the image in dark grey. And you can even see individual hornets in black flying out from this nest. This technology is currently being tested for use in the field to detect hornet's nests. In the UK, sightings of Asian hornets should be reported to the Non-Native Species Secretariat 
You can report your sightings to them using the Asian Hornet Watch app, which you can download from the Non-Native Species Secretariat website at www.nonnativespecies.org forward slash alerts. Or you can register your sighting through their website using the same web address. Or you can email them directly at alertnonnative at ceh.ac.uk. Please do try to take a picture of the hornets, killing or incapacitating them if you need to. Every year, there are thousands of reports of potential hornet sightings, and this has increased every year since 2015, with over 8,000 reported sightings in 2018. Unfortunately, all of these reports cannot be individually investigated, and many turn out to be cases of mistaken identity. So if you can take a photo and provide a location, there is a better chance these invasive hornets can be found and their nests removed. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the National Bee Unit and the Bee Inspectors for their quick response to the Asian hornet, and thanks to DEFRA and the Welsh Government who fund research into this invasive pest. Thank you for listening to this video. Please tune into our other video on the Asian hornet, which goes into more detail on the specifics of the UK invasion by the Asian hornet.